Hello and welcome back to the channel, it's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice 1 to 1. You can see behind me here we've got a solar array, I'm going to take you all through this job. We've got quite a big system here, so we've done both sides of this roof, 14 panels on each, big old inverter and a give energy all in one. At the start of this video I want to say a huge thanks to the customer who's been absolutely fantastic with us on this, providing uh, butties, sandwiches, teas, coffees, enough to sink a battleship, absolute legends, we really appreciate it. So thank you for the business and thank you very much for looking after us. If you are a customer looking to get solar PV and battery storage and you're interested in a proposal of your own, please do follow the link in the description, make an inquiry and it'd be really good to put something forward on your particular solar install. We're out of area again, this isn't our home patch, we've travelled away um, and we are happy to do so for others. Without further ado, let's jump into the video and see what the guys have been up to. So welcome back, this is another job and we are on the southeast array here. I'm going to give you a quick look at the roof and we're just on with this now we're doing both sides you can see Matty and Nathan are on the other side full scaffold screen so we're nice and safe really clean and nice deck that the scaffolders have put up for us as normal you can see we've been over the roof and we've marked out problems that we've seen so these are broken tiles where we've got corners chipped off so this is before we've started we do this on every job get your pictures run through with a video so you've got you can show the customer it's not evidence that's the wrong word they're going to see that there's damage up there and a bit of repair work's needed while we're doing this there is no point fitting an array over broken tiles that's just silly so we're going to swap these out as we go as well but important to note damage that's in place with this this is the southeast side the other is northwest the customer wanted to put them on the north side we didn't originally propose that it's fine um, we're 400 off the edge here for our array it's then running along all the way over here and we're stopping shy of this chimney we're about a meter off it for our bottom row we are going to stick another panel in up here on the top row so there'll be eight along the top seven along the bottom and um, the juice isn't worth the squeeze to stick a couple in here they're going to be shaded by this massive chimney um, and the mess around trying to creep the appropriate distance away i don't think it's worth it we may change our minds when we start setting out the rails but that's the opinion of the moment uh, we are 350 off the top so we're keeping it's tight roof to get two panels in portrait on. We wanted to try and get them in portrait to squeeze more in width ways. If we was landscape, we'd have three rows and we'd be a little bit further off the top, but we would be limiting ourselves due to what we said about the shading and such. It just felt better that way around. Um, we're 250 off the bottom, which is closer than we'd normally go. Uh, it is a gentle pitch, like 25 degrees. It's a really shallow pitch roof, this one. Even I'm happy walking around on it. So the runoff's gonna be pretty slow. So I'm happy that's gonna go into the, the gutters. It's not gonna spill over the edges, which is what we don't want. Um, and at the edge of that side, 400 and off, we're, obviously we're miles off this side. The other side of the roof was setting out slightly different. I'll take you over there and show you why in a minute. Um, but that's kind of where we're at. So we're gonna have a two rows in portrait, seven on the bottom, eight on the top. And these are our hook lines here, you can see. So with this one, we're going to end up being sort of 250 from the hook on the bottom. And at the top, we're 400 down from the first clamp on the panel. Sorry, and then the, the mid two are set about right. It's just where the array shuffles up and down. You're never going to get it totally perfect in the clamp zones. You just try and get them as close on as you can to ideal. And it just affects the wind loading. We use Jinko panels, so there's spec on those different from model to model but you can't even clamp on the corners. You just have to adjust the wind loading on your array accordingly. Um, but with this, with the seven panels on the bottom, we'll probably end up with nine hooks because of spacing off this chimney and trying to find end timbers and end at that, that row as well. So there's usually a hook or two more per panel per row as a rule of thumb. You can see there's a bit of undul undulation in this roof. It's a bit up and down with your timbers. It's 1970s build. The roofs are a shallow pitch. They were trying to save on timber of the day. Um, so we can try and get that out with our rails as best we can, because we want these to look flat, but that's going to be a challenge. You can see it where it dips over there already. It's maybe more visible by eye than it is on camera. And that's kind of it. We'll go look at the other side because the guys have been on setting some hooks out. I'll show you the array and where we're up to. And then we can maybe have a look inside at some of the gear that's going in on this one as well. So this is the northwest side. You can see we've got these old exhausts, cowls, whatever you want to call it, for an old boiler that was inside the house before. No longer used. So this is coming out. We've got a roofer coming to sort that, we think. So <laughs> that won't be there. You see at the minute where we're setting our hooks out, we've got three rails on. 
and we've had a few breakages again same as the other side all marked up and we've swapped a few in that we had to replace some of the, the worst ones as a particularly bad one up there which is miles outside where the array is going to be so this side is going to be empty space this is the northwest side there is room i think for another four panels however um we're just going to stick with the 14 on here the sun kind of sets over in that corner and again the client's budget we're kind of trying to spread the panels as best we can to get the best return on them and um, with these again we've got nine hooks again to try and get around an obstacle for our seven panels on the one row and then on this row we've got one two three four five six seven eight hooks for the seven panels and that'll be repeated up the roof you see we've got one in this top row somewhere up there already that was to just see if we can get the tiles out easy enough without disturbing the ridge which we can always best to check that before you start setting your rails because if that one doesn't go in then none of the rest works you end up too far away for your last clamp position and some roofs you've got to come down three rows before you can get a tile out this one's not too bad because they are large tiles and there's a bit of movement in them and we're able to wiggle them out without disturbing any of that so we're just pressing on with that on this side this is the same as you've seen before on the channel loads felt in good nick underneath the tiles are okay we're not breaking any as we're walking on them uh hooks are going in nice we've got our cutouts done so they're not touching the bottom of the tile above or the tile below there is a space as always and um, we're not just slapping these under the tiles as you will see on some youtube channels um, where they will then advocate that that's totally fine it is not totally fine and um we don't work like that but yeah that's where we're going we've got jinko 435s coming up here 15 one side 14 the other i know it's 15 13 i'm losing track and they'll be getting lifted up later on this week we didn't start here till 12 we had a nightmare in the traffic we're out of town working away um our delivery turned up with a pallet of broken panels well the bottom few were broken and bent but you've got to either reject the whole delivery or accept the whole delivery so we rejected it so we're on a re-delivery of panels but hopefully they're here um so with this one we'll have it hooked and railed by the end of tomorrow both sides weather yeah. permitting um that's kind of how we go typically you're down the roof getting your hooks and rails on base on your panels obviously this is a biggish array both sides so there's a bit more work there and like i say the roof on the other side is undulating this side looks pretty straight just by eye as sam would say with laser eyes it looks level so it is level um so this one should be easier looking at it and then we can get those panels set down i'll show you in the the plant room which is a very nice tidy garage awesome customer on this job by the way i'll pop a little picture up now somewhere to show you the food and, and drink supplies. Absolute superstar. Just the man we are very grateful. Um, but we'll show you inside at the main control gear of all of this and what we've got going in on the inverter side. So we have got the PME supply on this one here. We've got permission for eight kilowatts of export. That is a mains isolator. That's going to be repositioned so we can make better use of it into the gateway. So in the gateway, we've got our grid cables in and our load cables out. They're just loosely coiled here because I'm not sure how this is going to play out and what containment, if we're going to use any to get our cables from A to B. It's all quite local and everything's out on the wall anyway, but we want this to look nice. So we'll just see how that plays. My gut feeling is it'll probably look best outside of any containment and just nicely cleated or clipped away. But we'll see. We'll see how that one pans out. Um, we've got our AO breakers in here, and you can see these are um, RCBOs, so 61009s, and they are 30 milliamps. They are still, just looking, we've got type ACs, so they're still, oh no, there's a type A on the AIO, and a type AC on the PV. So these seem to change on every version of Gateway that's, that's shipped, so I'm not sure exactly the reasoning with that, with Give Energy um that's one beyond my pay grade but you see we've got the load coming in here for those of you who don't understand these work there is the c100 um, breaker here which is taking that power up into all of the clever stuff in the top of the gateway the house loads are back through a c80 so you've got some selectivity between those two i assume and then obviously you've got your pv and aio that feeds in if you want you can add an ev charger in here um, the instructions for give energy with a picture of an mcg rcbo or rcd in there are really poor in my opinion but the idea is you pop a little meter in and pop your little um, rcd in and wire out and away if you're going for i think it's um mode d i've been speaking to neil bridgman he's already told me on a message what you can do but you can do the cloud sync so if you use a give energy charge point 
you don't need to worry about the meter and that you can just take your power off the consumer unit power your ev as you normally would and it just syncs through the cloud between i assume this information and the ev and works it all out without you needing a meter and physical connected wires over on this side we've got our board here and i've shuffled things around a bit because of the space that's been provided by the client there is possibility of more aios in the future which is why we've left this space free but here you can see we've got our solar x solax inverter and that's all wired up with the three strings so two of them have to share 24 amps i think and the other one is a 12 or 13 amp uh, mppt so you need to be careful with that and your arrangement of your strings but this has great flexibility it's super duper useful we've popped the wires in to one side on this one why they're coming directly underneath and the thought process with that is they're a bit longer so if there is aio stacked under here and you need to test or whatever in the future there's a bit more there to play with so that's why it's ended up like that we are going to extend the trunk in across and along so we can take our dc strings to the outside they're going to exit in this back corner and then run up the external wall in conduit to the roof we'll show you that when we get round to it but for those of you who follow the other content, you'll have seen some shots around building all this up um, off-site. So we had all this pre-constructed straight on the wall, super duper easy, makes life lots simpler. Uh, we still need to clean up our cables that are taking the feed from the gateway over to the PV so we can get that a bit neater. I've just loosely run them in for now so we can terminate everything up. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's how the trunking looks inside. So you've got all your double insulated uh, cables. People ask about this a fair bit, but they're all still with their outer sheaths on. They're all rated to the maximum voltage in the system and there is no problem with them sharing that space aside from your normal um, derating and grouping factors that you would apply in any circuit design. I think it looks a little bit neater with a smaller trunk in so we may switch to that rather than the big bulky stuff um, but yeah just a different way of approaching it. Document holder up there as always so that's ready to load the stuff up and as I say is all we've got to do now is feed our strings into these DC isolators uh, that's already got the openings in ready to go so that should be super duper simple we just take those up and over the top out and away we go and um yeah that's kind of it that's kind of it so if the system is grid connected and normally operating the solar will feed into the gateway any excess beyond what the house loads are demanding can be taken by the battery to charge itself up if that's full and happy if the ev's on charge because there is one here with a zappy over there which has got a ct up there that can take the export um, into itself to fill the car up. And if all those things are satisfied, the export limitation on these generators um, can export up to eight kilowatts at once. We're never gonna see that peak altogether, I don't think. However, you never know, so we'll see. These arrays could actually be growing as well. So it depends how that all pans out of the future. In the back of the gateway, for those of you who aren't familiar with this, because this has caught me out, and thanks to Jordan and Dan from DMH for explaining. But this little lead here is actually where your LAN cable connects into. There's a little adapter you put on the end, and it goes in there. It does not go, you can see on the back plate there, there's a label saying LAN. It does not go in this part. Uh, it has to go into that. I'm not sure the reasoning why. I think they had some of them burn out, possibly, is the rumour. Um, but the only one we've got in at the minute is the Liberty part, so it's called Liberty In, and that just links down to the AIO so they can communicate with each other. Um, and yeah, you've got your point of isolation for anyone who's doing anything on this and to kill the flow of energy in each direction. Same over here, and then we've got all of the isolation points within the gateway itself, and then the normal household consumer unit. And of course, you need your Earth reference in islanding mode, so that's all in place and set to go as well. Uh, we've got our bond on the inverter. I'm going to tidy these wires up a bit again. They're just loose set, but it's all bonded up onto the inverter casing, as well as having an earth in the lead coming over to it here. Um, so the PV is on a chunkier cable than the AIO. So we've got a 6mm on the AIO and 10mm on the inverter. And the reason is for that, if this was ever to have its peak um, 8 kilowatt rating, you're kind of pushing the capabilities of that when it's in the trunking. So that's the difference in size on that one and i felt that when we tried to get it through the stuffing glands because it won't go through we had to change one out excuse me <coughs> <coughs> so there we are we're on that stage now i'll um take you up to the roof and show you what the guys have done with the hooks and the rails and then we should be at the stage of dropping our dc cables down into this corner and routing them away to here and otherwise that is in here done that's done um we could go and commission this now i could technically wire this in temporarily to get it all powered and commissioned but we're at three o'clock and for those of you who know how these things go they can end up taking hours causing you pain 
even leaving it in bypass mode, I don't like doing that. So I'm just going to leave it sat here and tomorrow, once we're happy and um, we've had our meter sorted out, we can do that at that stage. Um, probably while the guys are dropping their DC cables down off the roof space. Get a bit of content of that all together. So we'll see you on this one um, in the morning after I've shown you the roof. So you can see up there, the guys have got our conduit down. This has got three strings in, six mil, and that's doing the three separate arrays, which we'll run through in a bit. We'll drop down into some Kerpex just to run around this awkward corner, getting behind the light. Um, it just wasn't gonna work as easily as we wanted with Frigid. So we've got a bit of Flexicon on there, which has come up a treat, just need to trim the ties off. Back to Rigid again, just for the cross the top of this doorway here. Inside, there wasn't a great deal we could do, so we've brought this just across on the outside. I think it looks pretty neat as is, and um, I'll show you what we've got for the strings inside. So we've got our Flexicon enter into here. We had a bit of a dilemma with this one because the customer's got some conduit up already and trying to fit the 25 mil conduit with the saddles above and then get around all this lot in a way that matched wasn't very easy. Drawing the six strings through the 25 mil tube with all of these bends, it just was unrealistic. I don't think we'd have done it. So we've gone for this approach. Don't know what you think in the comments. Flexicon's perfectly fine. It looks nicer than the cables just strung up there. Ideally, we'd have had a bit of trunking, but we're kind of working with what we've got. This place is, is full. Like I say, we couldn't come inside and run across here because there's already some conduit up here as well. It was just a tight space to get around and I think it, it worked out pretty well. Over here at the gateway, we've got the main switch now coming off our meter, which then feeds in with the tails that are clipped on very nicely with these cable tie, um, sad, uh, cable tie knocking holders. I'll get the packet out and talk through them because they are pretty cool. We've got some on here as well. And again, with metal ties to hold them here and there as needed. Same up the side of the gateway here for our PV cable too. And I think that neatens it up pretty well. Um, as we've said before, we've done this with trunking, we've done it without. I'm happy with this with this application. The big fat trunking I think looks a bit bulky and scruffy in truth. We've done it on a couple of jobs and I didn't like it. Um, so we've gone back to cables on show. Either way, you'd have had a length of trunking here with that set on it and some cables popping out somewhere through blands. It's as long as it is short, we've still got to get around all of the service head and stuff with our tails into our Proteus blocks over there. So it's it's one of those. Um, yeah, it is what it is. Um, all waiting to be sealed up, so we're good to go on that front. And um, yeah, we kind of are where we are now. The last little bit is getting the panels on the roof. You may be able to hear in the background, but the guys are busy cutting the rail down. We've got four panels up there. It's quite late on today. We've been messing about commissioning this, just to mention that is all commissioned on online now. Um, which is good as you'll note by the green lights on the front, which means it's uh, happy with life And that's currently doing its initial calibration. If you're not familiar with these, they go through a process of emptying themselves Pretty slowly towards the end and then refilling themselves back up um, Again quite rapidly and then slow at the end Just to do a, I guess after they've been in storage, different battery modules in the briefcases, pull them all into the same State and um, ready to work forward. So that's doing that at the minute um, so yeah, tomorrow, we've now got our strings safely terminated into these. They're up on the roof with the MC4 plugs on the end, so we can build our array up, safely connect it in, and not be exposed, or exposed as little as possible to the live voltages that present. Um, so yeah, we've got 10 more panels to put on one side. Really won't take long. The panels going down is very fast. We was nearly going to do some more today, but the wind's picked up, and you know, it's, it's gone half four. So uh, we're going to leave it. We've got plenty of time tomorrow. The weather's fine. Um, to get the other 24 panels down, all bird guarded up, and away we go. I will catch up with you when we're at that stage. So we've got the distance off the top there, as you can see. It is about 300 mil, and off the bottom, I think we're 280. I'll show you off the platform, but I did just want to show you at the top there. We've still got a few cables just to tie up here when we cut these rails down, put the end caps on. So a little bit of neatening up, but otherwise, we're not far off both sides. I'll show you in a minute. It's really windy, it's starting to rain, so I'm going to put my phone away and we'll have a look a bit closer in a sec. Gap up the side, that's a good 400. Guys have got the end caps on already. So we're just going to trim this bird guard, fit it all the way along and around. At the other side, we've got the same size of rear. It's the same 14 panels. You can hear the guys are cutting the rails down over there already. Um, and that's where we're at. That's the panels. So this is a 14 panel string. It's just meeting the maximum voltage of our inverter. That was what was limiting us. And then the other two strings go into the second shared MPPT with 24 amps on it. So we're going to get those powered up 
there's still one panel to drop in at the other side and um, I'll show you all it working and we'll have a little run through some of the bits on this one as well. So we're at that stage again where we've been through the testing, both the AC and the DC side. Point of note, your safe isolation it is really important. There is a campaign industry of bringing forward as a collective of all the trade bodies, institutions and other individuals, brands, we're all coming together. We're going to be at all the lectures, the installer show, going through safe isolation. We're hoping to be able to issue CPD certificates, thanks to EAL at the trade shows events. So you can come along and get a CPD module for safe isolation. Um, but yeah, this is the TIS8000 and it works on DC and AC up to 1000 volts. And it's also got the jaws there for measuring current. This is really handy for solar installers. If you've not got one of these, they are pretty much way ahead of anything else at a um, probing voltage indicator level than anything else on the market. And you can use it to probe onto stuff as well to see if it has any voltages present, which is good for your diverter neutral currents and such. We now have power on into our inverter off one of the areas up there, and it's currently pumping out 240 watts. So the string arrangement on this is the northwest facing roof is all on one string, 14 panels. It's peaking towards the top voltage limit of the inverter, but we're just in there. And we've got string two and string three on the south side, and they are inputting um, as two separate strings to the other PV input modules on the bottom. As you see on here, we've got one side of the string which goes into one MPPT, and on the other side, these two combine. So you double the current, but keep the same voltage and the MPPT will, will happily run that away. It's up to 24 amps current on that one, just 12 amps on this one. So a bit of clever tech at the um, Solax inverter level to um, sort us out there. So we're just finishing up on the roof, those last strings on the southeast side, as we said, and then we'll be able to see what this will generate. It is very dull outside at present, so probably not a lot more, but that is the system on and working. As you see here, we've got our warning labels up on there, some on the outside as well. Um, we've got our three strings in, the AC in, AC isolator. DC isolator is ever important for anyone coming to do any maintenance and work on this, or if they need to change the SPDs. And if they're wired up correctly, you use your ferrules, you get your torque driver on them, and you make sure the connections are sound and safe. They pose no more danger than this. We need to get away from the plug and play mentality and refocus in on an engineering and ability and future maintenance of all this. This is going to be a big thing in a few years, maintaining PV systems as they become ever more common and making life easy for people in the future is something we should just be doing. Um, these are the IMO isolators. I think I showed earlier on in the video how they have a weird switching arrangement in terms of where the cables are coming in and out, so one to pay attention to on the instruction manual, making sure you're getting those in the right place. Again, they can be locked off and such. The AIO is doing its thing. It's had a calibration, it's all happy and working. Same with the gateway. So now we've got, if I open this, it has a funky little key in the side. Now we've got our AIO that's feeding in through this RCBO here, the PV feeding in through this one. And then we've got the grid in and out through here as well. And then obviously the house loads on that one. Um, so when you're grid connected, this will sit there as the, the backup to everything else, if you like. So if we've got enough PV generation and there's power in the battery, if this is set up in the dynamic mode most people use, then the house loads will draw from those two places. Any extra PV generation would first charge up the battery. If that's full, well, it would first set the house load, then charge up the battery. If that's full, it would start exporting out to the grid. Um, and equally, if these two were both out of the game so the pv's off it's night time battery's flat the grid comes in to sustain the house loads and you can do your overnight charging as well by the grid into the battery so this is just bringing the whole system together if you like super clever but also super simple in how it all wires and cables away um, and yeah essentially that's it so now your aio will pick up any loads in excess of the pv it's daytime meet the house loads demand if there is any extra export that to the grid so you can be paid for it and again if you want to change the modes so you just want to export if there's a, a saving session or whatever that is all in control of the give energy app super easy to do so you can make full use of it this pv generator just kind of sits here as a, a dumb element to it if you like it's just outputting that ac power into the gateway and the gateway is doing all the clever stuff within the app you can put this solax system online if you want but you're just introducing another app and another point of reference and confusion 
So we don't recommend that, just leave it there as is. The Give Energy data will present. If anybody does want to come, you can mess about on the front cover and see what's going on anyway. This is the setup I've got in my own house and just having more apps to look in and mess about with is confusing, I think. So we keep it simple, less stuff to go wrong and you get the same amount of data anyway. So that's kind of that. We'll jump up and see how the roof's closed up and have a little chat about the install as a whole. So we're just popping the guard, uh, bird guard on. There is room over the top. Again, this is deceptive. I'm sure it's a relatively flat roof, but we do have um, near enough 300 mil across the top. So Nathan's going to go along and pop all that in. We've got it up this side. Matthew's just cutting it along the bottom. You can see we're in our clamping zones uh, off the top and bottom of the panels as normal. And these are 435 Jinkos. See on there, we've got 14 up on this side and they are split into two separate strings, uh, which is all good. They've come up nice and flat, so we're very happy with that. We've got a good distance off the edge. If I can just scoot past Matthew and show you. We've still got to trim the bird guard up this side, but you can see we are nicely, nicely off. Uh, I've seen people leave this uh, under a bit of pressure to stop the birds, and I guess where the tiles are flat, but that would make sense at the front where you're along a straight edge. So I think that's maybe the best option, I'm not sure, I'm not sure on that one. We're just trying to stop the birds getting under, primarily. You can see Nathan up there, he's just about to go around that corner and get that on. I wish I could stand up a little bit taller and show you how far we are off the top, but rest assured, there is a gap, I'll get a picture. So we've got the roof on the northwest side, just about done. You see we've got a bird guard up this side and we're a good distance off. All the end clamps on nicely. Still got to trim the rail at the other edge. The guys are just busy um, putting the last bits of bird guard on, then we'll trim those off. And that is the roof work finished at that stage. Um, again, I can't, I'm not tall enough to show you, but there is, if I can get right up, a 300 mil space. There's enough room for Matthew to park his backside all the way along. Uh, and get his big legs in and put the bird guard. That tells you there's more than enough room. And you can see we're under the ridge line as well. So happy days. Fixing it in the right place again on this for the clamping zones. This is Van der Volk rail uh, mounting system as always. And these are the Jinko 435 panels as we've been using a lot recently. Really good. You see the beading up, so they've that's coming across on camera but the rain's beating on the top so that's the protective stuff that's on them when they first get delivered that'll weather away and um, they do self-clean a bit steeper the pitch the better that works but these are good to go that's the roof work all done so i hope you've enjoyed a look through this solar pv system and as i said at the start of the video if you're a consumer looking for one of these yourself or you want some further information and advice link in the description a massive thanks to the customer on this one it really is very much appreciated and great work as always by matthew and nathan they've pulled it out of the bag again on this one another home running on sunshine and battery storage catch you on the next one